ILS Obstacle Protected Airspace. While all instrument pilots are taught the need to maintain a centered glide slope needle, instructors don't seem to place the same emphasis on keeping the localizer needle centered during an ILS approach or any approach for that matter. Yes, there are dragons below the glide slope or glide path on any precision approach. However, similar hazards exist laterally in relative proximity to the approach course centerline. The problem here is that most instrument pilots don't realize how proximate these hazards might be. So let's look at the obstacle protection you're afforded on an ILS approach to better understand why sloppy tracking skills can put you at greater risk during an IFR approach. First, there is a sloping plane, colored green here, below the glide slope known as the OCS or Obstacle Clearance Surface. Obstacles are not allowed to penetrate this surface. To either side of the localizer course centerline is a triangular area with an inside face sloping outward and upward at a 4 to 1 ratio. Obstacles may penetrate into the blue triangular area but not above its inside face. Next to each triangular geometry is a trapezoidal area with an upward surface sloping outward at a 7 to 1 ratio. Obstacles may penetrate into the purple area but not above its upper surface. Now, I've shown the triangular and trapezoidal areas here as solid for visual effect, but it's really their upper sloping surfaces that are actually relevant here. At a distance of approximately 8 miles from the runway threshold, the 4 to 1 blue sloped surface can be found at 2,200 feet to either side of the course center line. As you cross the PFAF, or the Precision Final Approach Fix, and move toward the runway threshold, the triangular and trapezoidal geometries converge. At approximately 400 feet from the runway threshold, the 4 to 1 sloping obstacle protected airspace begins 400 feet to either side of the course center line. Anywhere below the green colored obstacle clearance surface and the 4 to 1 and 7 to 1 sloping surfaces, obstacle protection is not guaranteed. This is all the more reason that you should maintain course centerline on any approach, especially precision approaches. For instance, at decision altitude, the obstacle protected airspace at 3,500 feet from the runway can be as little as 526 feet to either side of the runway centerline. Looking at your Omni display at decision altitude, each dot deflection at DA roughly represents 100 feet of lateral displacement from the course centerline. The unsettling conclusion here is that with a five dot deflection on your Omni display, you have moved uncomfortably close to the four to one rising sloped wall of obstacle protected airspace. Of course, there are many variables that might affect this obstacle protection geometry, but it's clear that tracking the course centerline on any approach, especially an ILS approach, is very important to ensure flight safety. I purchased the new IFR e-course as soon as I saw it, and it has been amazing. Normally, I do not enjoy online courses because they do not deep dive into the why of a subject or how it relates to other material, but this course contains incredible levels of detail. You even receive expert tips and instruction from someone who has been a CFII for decades. I have been instructing for over 10 years and would recommend this to anyone looking for IFR ground instruction.